from the I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just £2 a ticket. No purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see McKinneyCompetitions.com. It's about listening and for me anyway, you know, listening to those stories, listening to those songs and being, okay, well, how can this make sense of the world that I am in today or make sense of the experiences that I have today? We have a duty of care to ourselves and to the planet and to other people in it and to other people in crisis and in conflict. That for me is not political, that is a fundamental human right. I don't think I realised how special that was until I came away from it and, um, you know, that was my foundation, like my, my granddad was in the show bands and, um, you know, those kinds of things allow for the importance of music to come through and that kind of belief and support. The first collection of songs, mythology and folklore, came together at the same time. The three love songs came together at the same time. The magpie, which is the oldest song on there, is the bridge between those two worlds. Samson and Goliath is the, the nod to Belfast as my adult home. Um, and Three Wise Women is, is the mystery, the stepping into mystery and the constant, every evolving door that is the unknown. You know, I am absolutely 100% living my dreams without a shadow of a doubt, Elaine. Um, and in order to do that, it's, it's hard work, and, um, but work I'm so willing to do. This is your host, Elaine Ingram, and that was the voice of our man musician, Danny Larkin, whose debut album, Notes for a Maiden Warrior, has wowed critics and audiences alike. Here's Danny to tell us all about her inspirations, her life, and her music. Hi, Danny. Hello. <laughs> I've been trying to, I've been trying to um, organize this for so long, and it's, you've just been, talk about a whirlwind. Um, this must be the craziest year that you've had. Your album came out last year, um, and but from what 2019, you've just skyrocketed. Oh, um, I know, you. like nominations at the Northern Ireland Awards, um, at the RT Folk Awards, you're nominated for uh, Best uh, Newcomer. Um, so, what's it been like? And you're just oh. back from South by Southwest as well, which we get into a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, thank you for, you know, um, your patience and, and uh, persistence, Elaine, because uh, those are the two things that are key for me at the minute. Um, it's incredible. It has been a whirlwind. And, you know, I've also just come off the back of a tour with Declan O'Rourke. With Declan and, O'Rourke, yeah. You know, it's been such a magical time. That's the only way I can describe it. And I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually sitting in Armand Marketplace Theatre talking to you today because... I was on the road up to Belfast, I had another interview before this and I have another one after this and um, the traffic just was not on my side, there were tractors and lorries and uh, <laughs> I just said, you know what, I'm going to pull in here and, and do these wee jobs from, from home. So um, yeah, it's, it's extraordinary, it's really extraordinary and I have to say, like since I put out the album, since I put out Notes for Maiden Warrior, you know, it's just returned all of those gifts that I've put out into the world in, in more ways than I can imagine and uh, I'm so grateful for that and I'm so grateful for all the people that I get to meet along the way. Yeah, I mean, the album is beautiful. It really is. Mm. Um, it harks back to um, the old Irish melodies, which I was actually, lucky, lucky enough, I was actually at the Folk Awards, the RT oh, Folk okay, Awards, cool. yeah. And um, I, I I actually didn't know what to expect because, um, you, know, I, you know, you think folk, it, it, I just have noticed like, recently in I don't know is this is this overnight there seems to be um a harking back 
to the old um, the old Irish folk music. And there was so much of that there. Um, there was even um, Sarah Makem was mm-hmm. on her. And, yeah. you know, she would be, if anybody doesn't know, like she was so inspirational for all of those old Irish airs. And I know that you're, um, I read somewhere that you're a big fan of Lisa O'Neill. Yeah, and yeah. she, if anybody doesn't know her either, she if you have listened to her as well. She ha- she does this very kind of shanosy old sound. Is this is this um, just a, a recent thing, or mm. have I been missing out? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't speak for everybody else, but you know, I've, uh, it's really lovely to talk about the folk awards. Actually, I haven't spoken about it in any interviews, and it really moved me. You know, for a number of reasons. Um, just a, a the sincere celebration of music and artistry on this island through the folk awards in in Vicar Street that night was so clear, and you know the fact that the president was there as I well. Know. He was down the road from me. <laughs> you know, oh, like Elaine, like you know, it just goes to show the importance placed on not only folk music but music. Um, on the island of Ireland in that way, to be welcomed in that way and to be held in that space. And, um, you know, for me, it's a fundamental part of how we communicate. So it just, it was so beautiful. It was such a beautiful evening. And, and um, you John know- John Clayton was fantastic as well because it, he, he is so passionate. He was the presenter and he yeah. is so passionate about his music. But what struck me as well was the amount of, of young artists you know, that are, like, there's Joshua Burnside as well. I actually saw him here in, in Warren Point. He played, in, mm. that's what you need to do is you need to come to Warren Point and play sometime. There's a, there's a great venue, <laughs> the Skylight Room, and he played there and he was fantastic. But I did notice there's an awful lot of young young people like yourself that are bringing this music back. Yeah. Well, this is it, it's bringing it back and it, it's bringing it forward, you know, at the same time, because for me, it's very much an integrative practice. It's not only hear these stories or hear these songs and we're harking back to the romantic days of old because whether we like it or not, those days probably weren't as romantic as we think. So it's about listening. And for me anyway, you know, listening to those stories, listening to those songs and being, okay, well, how can this make sense of the world that I am in today or make sense of the experiences that I have today? And what is the offering that I want to bring forward into the world as a result? And for me, that's only not, that's not only notes for Maiden Warrior, but, you know, Lisa O'Neill, huge influence on me from, you know, her presence on stage to the songs that she writes to how she sings them. And, um, you know, all of those things, and especially the nod to Sarah Makem, all of those things, you know, they're a movement. It's a movement. Um, even though it feels at times separate or individual, especially with the past couple of years that's been in it. But it definitely feels like a folk movement. And I say folk there to mean people, a movement of people, not specifically the genre of music, because, you know, songs stay relevant. Songs are there because they're relevant. You know, that's what folk folklore is. That's what folk people are. Um, And I just, I'm in in love with it all and I'm in awe of it all and um, very grateful to be able to contribute to that as well. Yeah, and you're like, you know, you come from Madden, um, little, small, little, little hamlet in, in Armagh, mm-hmm. on the right on the border. Um, how did you get involved in music in the first mm-hmm. place? I mean, you're in this small little place. Is, is it, was it through your family or were you surrounded by music or, you know, or was your interest just, you know, innate or? Yeah, certainly. And, oh. I just love when people say Madden because it's so rare and that I come from. And, um, you know, for me, my, my first experience of music is very much rooted in family and it's how we communicated and related to ourselves and each other. And, um, you know, that was from every Sunday evening from, you know, gathering, singing songs, telling stories, having a crack, but it wasn't a kind of a forced thing or a, performance thing it was just part of everyday life in the same way as you make dinner on a Sunday or you visit family on a Sunday that was just part of the way of life and I don't think I realized how special that was until I came away from it and um you know that was my foundation like my my granddad was in the show bands and um you know those kinds of things allow for the importance of music to come through and that kind of belief and support and you know I'm playing a gig now for the Armagh Fusion Festival and um 
I am so delighted to be returning home to Navan Fort to Eamon Macha to, to sing my songs. Um, I, yeah, I, you know, and that's the foundation, but then moving into adulthood, I guess, for me as well to, you know, claim that and reclaim that and inherit that for myself and integrate it into myself as an artist and my songs is a, is a wondrous experience. Yeah, and you, you, you studied um, politics and um, conflict and stuff and uh, uh, you, you were in that area. And um, does that inform your songs? I mean, I know a lot of your songs, you know, is there a political element to them? Mm. Or, and, you know, because of where you come from as well, mm. you know, that's on the border? Yeah, that's an interesting question, an interesting way to ask the question. And the short answer is no, my songs are not um, political. They're not political songs. But, you know, I am a person that lives on this planet, in this world, the world that we live in now. And I think there's a keen responsibility, not just of artists, but of all of us to really begin to dig a little bit deeper into the world that we've actually created here and, you know, feel that sense of privilege and responsibility of, you know, we have a duty of care to ourselves and to the planet and to other people in it and to other people in crisis and in conflict. That for me is not political. That is a fundamental human right. And, um, you know, I think we're, we're, we're moving into an age where that's becoming clearer. And for me, the role of music in that and the role of notes for Maiden Warrior in that, if I can be so bold to say, is to create those spaces to allow for a deeper engagement of who we are and why we're here. Um, yeah. Because for me, those are the questions that when we ask ourselves, we cannot help but be kind. Um, and we cannot help but to feel that responsibility to change the world for good, to put it quite, quite, quite bluntly, Elaine. Um, and that those things to me are something are, 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 that I'm so passionate about. And that comes through in my performance of how I play as well. It's about showing up you know, um, showing up on stage, showing up in, in community um, and responsibility. Yeah, and, and music, I mean, music unites, you know, it, you know, it, it crosses all boundaries and it unites people no matter what. So, and it brings, it brings joy. So, you know, if, if there are situations of conflict or anything, you know, music is the great leveler. Mm -hmm. you know well, um and I know you've traveled to Israel and how, how was your experience there and how did that um yeah so I I spent two months in in Palestine in in the West Bank in a town called Nablus um as a volunteer music music based um you know I also spent time in Indonesia and Colombia all very similar residencies and um music-based practices and you know what can I say uh, I carry those with me in my heart every day um you know we are the same the world over our stories are the same the world over and um I'm very grateful for the privilege to be able to travel and to see and to learn and to understand but that also comes with a you know when you return home, the reverse culture shock for me is always bigger than going anywhere because I return home with this sense of, you know, who was that for? Was that, you know, like, was that for me? Was that to be supportive? You know, I come away with more questions and, and the thing that I sit with is, you know, how can I bring forth the truest part of myself and selves through music in order to create a world that we can breathe a little easier in or share a little greater and deeper in and connect in. And for me, you know, those are the things, like, like you said, music brings joy on a very fundamental level. And um, those are the things to me that I am so passionate about and sit in, in a way that allows me to move through those experiences um, yeah, that's a hard question to answer, but I, yeah, I've tried my best thing.
Get ready to shake up summer with the Get Active ABC Sunshine Fill program for kids and families. Get set for land-based adventure at our summer schemes, or why not get adventurous and maybe get wet at our splash-tastic water sports summer program. There are so many things to do, and all we need is you. See getactiveabc.com slash summer for all the details. Yeah, but and the feedback you've gotten though, obviously you have, you know, you know, you've done your 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 job as such because the feedback that you've gotten from everywhere has been so positive. And um, you know, um, what what was how, how has the past year you know been in that in that sense? You know, I heard you on Sean Rocks and Marina um, last week, and um, it's just you know it's just been so so nonstop. Uh, you know, how has it been in terms of actually? getting up and going all the time, you know, you're away from home. How have you found, how have you found that a- aspect of things, you know, being yeah, on the road? It's, it's a and lot what's of Declan O'Rourke uh, like? Oh, <laughs> Declan O'Rourke. <laughs> now, I can't be speaking on behalf of Declan, but, um, <laughs> but what I can say is he's one of the kindest gentlemen I have ever encountered. Very gracious, a very important artist on this island and a fire. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have spent so much time with them and to enjoy singing and playing with them. Um, and yeah, it's about balance, you know. These are my first, this is, these are my first really big tours and big time out, like, you know, after the pandemic and the stillness that was. And um, it's a lot of getting it right and a lot of, you know, learning how to nourish myself. And I'm also very supported in my incredible manager, Laura McCabe. And it's the two of us really working hard together to make it work. You know, that's, you know, I am absolutely 100% living my dreams without a shadow of a doubt, Elaine. Um, and in order to do that, it's it's hard work. and um, But work I'm so willing to do and, you know, to go to, like, to be on tour with Declan and to play, Vicker Street on the Sunday night to be on a flight the next morning out to Texas and then you know as soon as I arrive in have a show on a boat that morning you know three shows in three days and then out to Vancouver that night and do the same kind of uh, three shows over three days in that time period and then back have one day between going on the road again like you must be wrecked I was <laughs> like I just finished their Declan's tour on Sunday. Today is Wednesday, right? Thursday. <laughs> um, there you go. Um, I just I rest Declan's my case. <laughs> yeah, finished Declan's tour on Sunday, and that was actually in Casa Blaney, so not too far from where my ones live now, which was lovely. And, um, and then I took a couple of days off and, and went to Galway, and that has nourished my soul to no end, Elaine. It's it's uh, reminded me of the beauty and wonder and awe of this island that I'm very much a part of. And um, it's about working those, even if it's only a day or two days, it's about working that time in because ultimately, you know, my role or purpose is not to be overwhelmed or busy with everything, to be so busy with everything that I'm overwhelmed and can't engage with it. Like, I very much see it as... <laughs> being able to listen and connect to the wonder and beauty of this world and share that. Um, and I can only do that when I'm um, connected in those ways. So it is about balance. It's about, okay, I can see this is a busy time coming up for me. Where am I working in those two days to go and um, be in the forest or be in the sea or, and those, t- those things for me are the coming home. It's the wildness, it's the nature, it's the magic of, of this whole entire island that we all share that belongs to us all. Yeah, and I suppose, you know, you, you said you went to go to go away and couple of took a few days off, but I'm sure because of because of what your songs are, um, you do you get a lot of inspiration? Would you be sitting, would you be out there, you know, sitting under a tree and then writing little bits and pieces down? Or you you is this where you, you get your inspiration from mm-hmm. nature, obviously, and you know, and being in Ireland. Mm-hmm. So um so it was a kind of a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 there are no down days in in the sense of I am so completely enamored with uh, the magic that exists in the world and not just on this island either you know it exists the world over in different formats and I'm very 
grateful and excited to have experienced that in Colombia and in Indonesia and in Palestine through stories and songs in those places and through jungles in those places and in the desert and um, on the borders of those places, which is usually where I feel the most at home, which is probably not that's, surprising. Yeah, you that's know, interesting. Yeah. In spaces uh, and, you know, I don't see inspiration as work. You know, I don't even, I find it difficult to even call gigging work because it's such a, a place of pride and pleasure and joy for me, but it is, you know, and so when I'm not gigging and not, you know, running Danny Larkin and all the other things that come with, you know, it's not just gigging. When I take time off to be in nature, that for me is time off, you know, and I have been inspired to no end the past couple of days, which is, and I've noticed it in the tone of the interview that I'm having with you and the tone of the interview that I just had. And um, yeah, it's, it's a, what can I say? It's a very um, cherished way to, to live um, when I can put those things to, to have the balance. And you say like Danny Larkin, tell us about the name because um, I did yeah. read somewhere that, um, your 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 actual name is Daniel Carr. Yeah, it is. You've done yeah. that and not very many people know that, but sure they'll know it now. Um, oh um, yeah, but Larkin. I mean, Larkin. you couldn't it couldn't be more you know fortuitous that it's a, a beautiful songbird type name. But tell us where mm -hmm. it came from. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I hadn't thought of it with the lark, which is interesting because I love birds. Um, Oh, that's the first thing that sprung to mind when I heard yeah. that. Yeah. Because Larkin as a, as a surname was the maiden name of my great grandmother on my grandfather's side, my, like my mother's side, my grandfather on that side. And um, it was a fam name that was lost to the family over a hundred years ago when she married, because there was only two of them in the family, um, her and her brother and her brother died in World War One, And she married and took the name Smith. Um, which is my grandest surname. My mum was born into Smith, Smith and McCabe. Um, and then my mum took my father's name when she married Carraher. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, I am Danielle Carraher as a, as a whole person or a full person. But Danny Larkin is, you know, for me, I am Danny and Larkin is the family that holds and carries and brings and the magic. And it's the, not a nod to the ancestors, but it's the very ground that I stand on and gives me the the power and the energy and the resources to to keep going when it's you know when you're exhausted and it's early flights and late night gigs um and yeah i i very much you know performed under danny for a number of years but when i took on larkin in in 2020 that's when things really started to change for me so um yeah i can only give in to that <laughs> And the album now, um, notes for a maiden warrior. How 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 did how long did that how long did it take to write? Were you writing that like over a number of years or? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Like I have never just sat down and said, okay, I'm going to write an album. And um, the songs come when they come, and I, then I work at them. And you know, one of the songs in the, that album is like eight years old. Um, Samson and Goliath, is it? No, nope. no. The magpie, but Samson and Goliath isn't long behind. And, you know, I could not have put them on there. There were certainly other songs that could have went on. But for me, like, it was very much, a, no, these are the songs that belong in the album. So the first half was kind of written, you know, these collection of songs. It's, it's an album of two halves. The first half is folklore mythology. The second is love. Um, and it ends in mystery. And, you know, the first collection of songs, mythology and folklore, came together at the same time. The three love songs came together at the same time. The magpie, which is the oldest song on there, is the bridge between those two worlds. Samson and Goliath is the, the nod to Belfast as my adult home. Um, and Three Wise Women is, is the mystery, the stepping into mystery and the constant, ever-evolving door that is the unknown. And, you know, if I can remember to stay true to all of those things. Um, I know I'll be in good stead. Not always easy, but um, it's, it's, it's an, yeah, yeah, 
it's a huge, huge piece of work for me. And when you're writing now, would you come up with the, um, when you, the your method of writing? Would you tend to write the, the lyrics first? Or because the music is so much a part of it, you know, and you play, you know, your instruments as well. So do you find that, I'm just curious because I'm sure everybody writes in different ways and, you know, I'm, yeah, I, I'd love to know, you know, what, what your, your method is or do, is it different for every yeah. song or do the it's words? Different, it changes, to... yeah, it certainly changes all the time, but it usually comes music first and then the words come and I mostly write on guitar, you know, guitar, play guitar, banjo, really enjoy playing the flute and like, you know, picked up the trombone to learn with my granda and though and like a bit of the fiddle when I was younger like I enjoy that but guitar is definitely the instrument that I feel most at home writing in um so yeah like it's usually music first and then lyrics but it's it can be different and I'm just open to the process for me it's a process of being present and seeing what comes from that rather than being prescriptive about yeah. the process itself and were you surprised at how well received it was? Were you, were you, you know, were you blown away? And I'm not surprised. Obviously, you know, your work is great. You know, obviously mm -hmm. you have confidence in your work and you get up on the stage and you, you do your thing. But to just, because there's so many singer songwriters out there, you know, that are plugging away and you're, to, you know, no matter how talented you are and how great your stuff is, to find that place where, you know, it gets heard and stuff gets picked up and it becomes really popular you know that's a really hard thing you know you're mm -hmm. yeah and I it is and you know it's certainly not an overnight thing for me either Elaine it's been a, a long process of working on my, like of myself as an artist and understanding that and um, then again working with Laura you know um, but I'm constantly in awe of, of it and constantly in awe of the album like Yes, 100%. I'm confident in my work and believe in my work. Um, but you never know what the world will make of things. You know, that can never be um, known. And yeah, I, I just, I, I sit here with an open heart and with open arms to welcome it all because it's, it's pure joy for me. Um, and it just keeps growing and expanding in ways that I have dreamed for so long. Um, and I, I hope it continues. What age were you when you wrote your first song? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, but I wrote my first poem at 11. So you were writing poetry before you were writing yeah. songs? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And South by Southwest now, um, that's for anybody who doesn't know, South by Southwest is probably the biggest um, industry music event you know, in the world. It's in Texas and um, all of the talent that's, that's upcoming talent you know it would be, it would be where the record labels are there picking you know picking out people and everything so it's a huge it's a huge deal how, how was your experience there I mean even being there um is meant to be amazing I'd somewhere I'd love to go myself but um you know yeah it's just um, music filled you know everywhere what was it like for it, you? An incredible experience and you know the sun definitely helped to leave a very cold rainy Ireland oh. um, <laughs> and to arrive into Texas. Um, incredible just you know the energy of music spilling out of everywhere and I think the thing for me that struck me most Elaine was um, you know everyone that I met and the feeling in the place was that artists and that music are not only important, but vital. And that came through in how the festival was run. It came through in the conversations that you have with people on the street. It came through in the showcases. It came through in the energy of the people on stage. It came through in the audiences, you know, and that music is vitality and that artists are a part of that, a key part of that and are to be supported in ways that, you know, they need, which is, something that we don't talk about a lot. Um, you know, it is a constant process of, of giving energy whenever you're playing and performing. And um, it definitely felt in Austin and Texas that they understood that and understood what was needed around that. And um, that for me was, yeah, really cool to see that it was possible, not only somewhere else, but some, something that we could possibly do here as well. Um, yeah. yeah. 
because of lockdown, you're just talking about artists being supported, you know, and artists were the last ones to really um, get back out there. And I know a lot of musicians myself who struggled very, very, it was very, very difficult for them. Do you think we need more, they need more help, you know? And we learned that during lockdown and the importance of music because I think, yeah, and people have found that it's just been, you know, it's even more important now that we're back out of it. Absolutely. And it's not just about financial support, which is needed, like uh, bottom line, you know, bills need to be paid. Artists were not financially in ways that they needed in order to pay them for a very long time. And um, I don't mean that in as a way of giving out or disrespect in any way. It's just a, a fact. And um, not, but, you know, financial support is one thing, but also emotional support, like counselling services, structures within that to, you know, understand a little bit more what it's like to be, you know, for people who are different levels of playing as well, you know, different levels of not professionalism, but, you know, being someone who plays in arts theatres um, is very different from someone who is used to making their income on, you know, in a pub on Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Yeah. But, you know, that that requires a different kind of support and it's a different kind of engagement. And how do you go from, you know, doing that every week of your life, Friday, Saturday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where you're meeting people and that's very much the lifeblood of your work and your energy to then go behind closed doors for two years. Like that's a massive impact. It, has, it must have a massive impact. And, you know, musicians and artists and the crews around us, you know, we're, we don't, artists and musicians do not exist in this little bubble. You know, there are whole, you know, there are sound engineers and there are stage managers and there are managers and um, production teams that all make things happen. It's a huge industry. Um, and it's a huge industry, both north and south in this island, that we must take better care of. And um, yeah, I, I know there are certainly initiatives in place now and there are people beginning to talk about this. And I only hope that the conversation continues. OK, well, that's great. And I'm really glad that you have audiences back and we can get out to gigs and, you know, go and see you and people like you. It's just fantastic. And I think we all appreciate it a lot more having had that you know, as, as, as audience members, I mean, one of the first things I just could not wait to get out was to a gig. Steve Fontaine's GP up in Belfast it was the first gig we went to after lockdown and they were brilliant. But um, I really, really want to see you next. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I look forward to meeting you somewhere along the way and thank you for the questions. And yeah, to anybody listening, please come and say hello. We're, you know, we're all yeah, in where it are together. You next? Now I know you're in Armagh, but this I'm podcast in Armagh week. tomorrow night, and then actually I have a show in Belfast on the 29th of April. It'll be a, it'll be a very it'll be a show with a twist. It'll be a couple of new players with me and some new songs. So it'll be lovely to see some people there. Um, yeah, tickets are available now. It's part of the Cathedral Quarter Arts Festival. Okay, brilliant, Danny. Thanks a million. Fab. Take care, Lynn. Thank you. Bye, Sloan. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that chat with Danny. Um, and if you get a chance, try and catch one of our gigs or at least um, have a listen to the album notes for a maiden warrior, which really is very, very beautiful and deserving of all of the acclaim that it's received. Remember to keep getting all of your news from Arma I, and I hope you join us next time for our podcast. From the I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just £2 a ticket. No purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see McKinneyCompetitions.com.